आई एस टी वी प्रेजेंट्स इन एसोसिएशन विद धनमंजूरी कम्युनिटी कॉलेज दी एम यूनिवर्सिटी इम्फा लॉन्सिंग सीरीज ऑफ एजुकेशनल प्रोग्राम रिकॉर्डेड ऑनलाइन क्लासेस फॉर अंडर ग्रेजुएट एंड पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट्स बाय टीचर्स फ्रॉम वेरियस कॉलेज एंड यूनिवर्सिटीज ड्यूरिंग दिस कोविड नाइन्टीन लॉकडाउन एवरी डे ऑन आई एस टी वी नॉन इन एट पी एम From 24th May 2020 onwards, what's for that? Only on IHTV Nongin. Hello, everyone. I'm Christina Mahaini, and welcome to my session. Today, I'll be reading and discussing the poem "The Missing Link" by Mamang Dai. It's a part of the syllabus for the six semester students of English honors for Northeast Literature under Manipur University and Diem University. Before I read the poem, let's have a look at the poet. Mamang Dai is one of the most popular writers of the Northeast, India, hailing from Arunachal Pradesh, and she belongs to the Adi tribe. She is the first IAS officer from Arunachal Pradesh. who served for quite some time and left the job for pursuing journalism she is a recipient of the padma shri in 2011 and a winner of the sahitya academy award in 2017 for a book the black hill and this particular poem is a beautiful poem where she speaks about how she'll be missing at one point of time her people her land the poem is of 68 lines divided into seven stanzas now let's take a look at the poem I will remember then the great river that turned turning with the fire of the first sun away from the old land of red robed men and poisonous ritual when the seven brothers fled south disturbing the hornbills in their summer nest remember the flying dust and the wind like a long echo snapping the flight of the river beetle the namas in the caves where men and women dwelt facing the night guarding the hooded poison there are no records the river was a green and white vein of our lives linking new terrain in a lustful land brother and brother claiming the sunrise and the sunset in a dispute settled by the rocks and graved in a vanished land i will remember then the fading voices of deaf women framing the rude of light in the first stories to the children of the tribe remember the river's voice where else could we be born where else could we belong if not of memory divining life and form out of silence water and mist the twin gods water and mist and a cloud woman always calling from the sanctuary of the gods remember because nothing is ended but it is changed and memory is a changing shape showing with us fading possessions in lands beyond the great ocean that all is changed but not ended and in the villages the silent hillmen still await the long promised letters and the meaning of the words now let's have a deeper look into the poem missing means not to be located or gone it also means feeling the absence of someone or something sometimes with regret and link means connection between places people events things or ideas therefore missing link means feeling the absence of the connection of the poet with her people and her land The poet speaks about a connection that she will be missing at some point of time in her life. She'll always remember her land, her people, her culture, the rivers, the birds, etc. Let me explain the poem stanza wise. In the first stanza, the poet will then remember. The poet knows that she will one day be gone from her village, maybe because she'll get married. or she would have gone to other cities to pursue her dreams that's why she uses a word then so by then she will remember the great river 
and probably the great river here is the Siang River. The Siang River is one of the tributaries of uh, the Brahmaputra River and is one of the most popular rivers of Arunachal Pradesh. So she'll remember the uh, river which is turning, turning with a, a fire of the first rays of the sun, means the river that is gleaming with a, a early sunrise. She'll remember the river which is turning with the fire of the first rays of the sun away from the old land. And her land is not a new land, but it's an old land where men are wearing red robes and performing poisonous rituals. We'll have to keep in mind that most of the Aris before the advent of Christianity were worshipping the animistic religion Doni Polo. Now, when the seven brothers fled south, disturbing the humble in a summer nest. So this is a reference probably to the seven clans of the Aris when they fled south to Pasigat from the region of Kebang. And the Aris are believed to have uh, migrated from the Tibet region. Or this could also probably mean uh, the seven districts where the Aris are found. The districts of Siang, Upper Siang, West Siang, East Siang, Lower Dibang Valley, Lohit and Namsai districts. Or it could also mean the seven northeastern states of Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland, Sikkim, and Tripura. So this is a picture of the seven brothers who are fleeing away towards the south. And as they flee, they're disturbing the uh, hornbills which are nesting in the summer. And this is a picture of the fleeing brothers. In the second stanza, she remembers the flying dust and the sound of the wind like an old echo while breaking or snapping uh, the flight of the poisonous beetle. Now, men and women are dwelling in the caves and they are guarding against this poisonous beetle. And the poisonous beetle here could be uh, the giant water bug, uh, considered as a uh, poisonous hooded creature, probably are Nausik, Nausik in Manipuri, right? The village people uh, residing in the caves are guarding against this hooded poison. In the third stanza, the poet describes the river as the green and white veins of their lives, meaning to say that the river plays a very important part in their lives. There are no record of land boundaries. So if you go probably normally, I mean, to all the villages, there are no records about land boundaries. It's, our, it's always being demarcated either by erecting stones or the river is always the demarcating line between a village or another village. So the poet says that they had no records and the river was a connecting link between different villages and territories. And apart from that, the river served as a sole purpose for people to be uh, using the river as source of water supply or for fishing or for many other things. That's why the poet says she will remember the river. She also mentions the dispute of two brothers, siblings, and she uses the word lustful land means being greedy for land, which we normally even do have here. I mean, brothers always quarreling for land. The other brother over here in the uh, poem, one of the brothers states that the land towards the sunrise is his, and another one claiming that the land towards the uh, sunset is his land. And finally, the dispute is being settled by erecting stones engraved in a vanished land, which is uh, typical about the erection of stones to demarcate uh, boundaries in the villages. In a fourth stanza, the poet will remember the old and deaf grandmother narrating stories to the children of the tribe. The stories told by the grandmothers are framework for the root of life of these children. And if we look at almost all the tribal, uh, tribal history, tribal, uh, tribal culture, uh, written records are not there. So the history is passed down from one generation to the another generation through word of mouth probably what we always do, like in Manipuri, uh, Pungawuri, Liba, correct? I'm sure it's Pungawuri, Liba, no? Uh, uh, stories being narrated by grandmothers to their uh, grandchildren. That's how we got to learn about our history, our culture. And so this scene brings back where the poet will be remembering about the narration of those stories to the grandchildren. Now, uh, coming back to the fifth stanza, the poet will remember the river's voice where she was born and brought up. She asked, where else can we belong? Where else can we be born? So her fondest memories will be perhaps of the river, 
probably because she went for swimming as a young child or because uh, their people went for fishing. Therefore, she will always hear the voice of the river. In her memory and silence, life had been formed close to the river. Then, again, we have a, a picture of the cloud woman who is residing in a gorge. And a gorge is a passage of steepy uh, passage where the stream is running through. So there's a woman of the, uh, residing in the gorge who will be calling out to the twin gods of mist and rain. And in the sixth stanza, the poet speaks about memory, which is always changing its shape. It's just like uh, the things that happen today will be clear, very fresh in my mind. But tomorrow, a little part of that will go away, just like that. Certain things which we were, which were very fond to us in our childhood. After certain years, certain parts of that memory will fade away, but it will always be there. So the poet talks about how memory, which always keeps on changing, will always be there, even though it changes, it won't be ended. And the land beyond the great ocean will change, but it won't be ended. And the poet concludes with a nostalgic image of her village and the hillmen sitting in the villages awaiting the long promised letters. This is a reference to how normally the children in the villages go to other states or other cities for studies or either to work, to pursue their dreams. And back at home, the parents would be sitting and waiting for the letters which were promised. And when the letters do come, the parents will be uh, trying to decipher the meaning of the words. So this is a poem. Now let's take a look at some of the literary devices, the poetic devices, or the figures of speech that the poet has used in a poem. It's written in a free verse. Free verse means, as such, the poem doesn't have a definite rhyming scheme. The poet has also used imagery there are all vivid uh, and clear images which are seen in the poem. Let's take a look at that. Say, for example, number one, we have uh, the great river turning with the fire of the first sun. So this brings to mind the river that is flowing and gleaming with the first rays of the sun. It's a clear picture. Then the men wearing red robes, performing poisonous rituals, then again, we have the seven brothers fleeing south, the disturbed humbles in summer flying away from their nest when they heard the sound of the uh, people coming, the swirling dust of wind, I mean the echo, uh, the dust and the wind that's coming is almost like an echo. Yeah, so it's a very clear picture. Then we have the flight of the venomous poisonous water beetles. I mean, uh, the water beetles are running, running in a flight. And this can be seen, I mean, it's, it can be felt. It's as though we can see the beetles actually uh, moving and the movement is being snapped or being broken with the sound of the people. We have the image of men and women in caves guarding the hooded poison. Then the land dispute between the brothers, I mean, this is a, I mean, it's a picture which we can always uh, visualize, I mean, that this beautiful land and the cloud woman in the gorge calling out to the twin gods of water and mist. Then we uh, can see the image or the picture of the old deaf grandmother telling stories to the grandchildren. And uh, we can also see the image of the silent hillmen sitting and awaiting for the long promised letters. So these are the images that the poet has uh, used. Now, the poet has also used, uh, so there's a free use of imagery. Imagery, there's a use of the simile. And a simile is a direct comparison between two uh, distinct things by using the words like, like, using words like and as. So if you look at the uh, poem, there's a line. The flying dust and wind like an old echo. That's a comparison of the sound of the winds, which is being compared to an old echo. Then uh, the, uh, the poet has also used metaphor. Metaphor is an implied uh, comparison between two distinct things. Say uh, the line, the river was the white and green veins of the lives. I Means the importance of the river being compared to the veins of the people's lives. And um, then there's alliteration. Means the repetition of the same sounds. Here it's a consonant sounds. Say for example, the word turn, turn, turning, 
fire, first, wrath, rob, seven, south, lust, land, brother, brother, sunrise, sunset, hill, still. So this is the alliteration which is found in the uh, poem. Now, again, there's personification. Personification is giving the attribute of a person to a thing. Here we have water and mist, which is personified as twin gods. The personification of water and mist as gods, we can actually see them as gods. Then memory as a person that changes, memory as a flitting person that is changing, and the river, which is the soul of their lives. Then we have repetition. Certain words are being repeated. Say, for example, we have a repetition of the word water and mist. Water and mist has been repeated twice. Then we have the frequent repetition of the word river, which has been repeated four times in a row. In first stanza, the second stanza, the third stanza, and the fifth stanza. So we have a repetition of these words. Now, before I conclude, here's a summary of the poem once again. The poet will at one time remember the river, the people of the old land wearing red robes and performing rituals. She will hear the sound of the flying dust and the winds like an echo snapping this flight of the poisonous water beetles being guarded by men and women in caves. She will recall the settling of the two brothers dispute for land by erecting stones and will also hear the old deaf grandmother narrating stories to their children. The poet will fondly remember the river's voice where they were born and grew up. She goes on to add that though things will change and memory fades, it will still be there. She concludes with a nostalgic picture of her village people waiting silently for the letters which were promised and looking for words. With this, I conclude. Thank you for watching. ISTV presents in association with Dhanamanjuri Community College DM University Impha launching a series of educational programs recorded online classes for undergraduate and postgraduate students by teachers from various colleges and universities during this COVID-19 lockdown every day on ISTV Nongin 8 p.m. From 24th May 2020 onwards, what's for that? Only on IHTV Nongin. <laughs>